Welcome back. Political tension is rising in the southern African nation ahead of a potentially divisive general election in 2023. Zimbabwe's Opposition Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC Party, said on Sunday that its leader, Nelson Chamisa, escaped an assassination attempt after his convoy came under a bomb attack in the town of Chinhoi, about 115 kilometers west of the capital, Harare. In a statement posted to Twitter, the CCC says Mr. Chamisa's convoy was attacked with explosives as it uh, approached the venue of a rally. It said the venue was also petrol bombed on Saturday by unknown people. Now joining us to discuss uh, this this morning is the CCC National Deputy Spokesperson Gift Ostalos CV Siziva. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Thank you, our revolutionary greetings to you and revolutionary greetings uh, to fellow Africans. Okay. All right, let, let's let's talk about what happened over the weekend, you know, that can be described as an assassination plot. Um, can you describe, you know, what exactly uh, took place? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Citizens Coalition for Change, the Z-Bat, the Nelson Chamisa, they uh, holding thank you rally across the country because uh, we won the violations that happened after the assault. Um, of the uh, masking of the democratic movement and the authentic opposition just last year. So after our victory, we have gone across the country to thank uh, the citizens of this country because uh, they voted for us under extreme difficult conditions of the uh, closure of democratic space and authoritarian consolidation. So this weekend with our rally um, in Chinoy, which is the western uh, region of our country, and when the president Smotoket was about to enter into the venue of the rally, um, a suspected ZANU PF uh, person uh, who had collected the details and engaging the police over the matter threw um, a grenade in front of the vehicles and an explosive uh, uh, a grenade in front of the vehicle, but we managed to navigate and uh, continue with our program. This is not the first time there has been an assassination attempt on the person of the president and of course attack of different members of the democratic contingent and the broad um, democratic uh, forces in our country attack on journalists attack on the leadership of the alternative and of course different democratic players in our country um, this also happened after there was petrol bomb thrown uh, in our venue in the evening because you know that when the president is coming the place is manned a few days before for security protocols and uh, this has been meant to achieve the twin objectives of number one, to try and dismember and disorganize and disenfranchise the public from participating in our events, and secondly, to target the rank and file of the citizen movement. And this is happening as we enter into the shadows of the next election because this democratic space is closing. And this is because um, the support for the triple C is surging has been proven by different independent research units and of course president chamita emerging as the candidate of choice to occupy number one chancel avenue in the uh, the next election so this is happening because the regime in harare is scared and petrified and they are finding ways and means to make sure that uh, they disorganize and disenfranchise and of course dismember the alternative which is the citizens coalition for change um, now, you mentioned that this isn't the first time that this has happened. Of course, we know that this has happened also in 2021, as well as in 2018. And now your party, the CCC, has blamed uh, the ruling party's ANU PF supporters for the attacks. First of all, can you confirm to us how true this is and what proof your party has that it is indeed the ANU PF supporters that are you know, responsible for these attacks? Thank you very much. Uh, we are saying this because there was a ZANPF member who was captured on camera uh, actually advising ZANPF supporters across the country that uh, when they say Pasin is a uh, triple C, which is basically downwind, he explained to uh, ZANPF supporters across the country that it means that President Chamisa must be killed. It came uh, from ZANPF. We made reports to the uh, existing commissions in this country. We made reports to the police. We actually took the matter uh, to the highest uh, office in this country uh, in terms of um, uh, the police and, of course, the judiciary. We also took the matter to regional and international bodies because there were clear declarations that President Chamisa must be assassinated. And after that, we have seen several attempts on the life of our president. 
We've also seen our rep, as I'm speaking to you right now, two of our members of parliament, Honorable Job Sigala and Honorable Godfrey Stolle, and other 15 people have been in prison in illegal detention and they've been denied bail, which is a constitutional right. And of course, this was also happening after there was brutal murder of our supporter in Nyatime, which is in a dormitory town in Chitugliza, out of Harare. So these events are actually coming after a declaration by an official of Ganupev that President Jamisa must be killed and Triple C supporters also must be punished. And of course, this is also happening after there is a deliberate attempt to try and arrest, detain, and of course, torture different members of the opposition movement. Well, um, as, well, like you said, you know, you did, you know, make police reports, you know, but has there been any immediate reaction from the government since the attack took place um, over the weekend? Then, and um, yeah, go ahead. Very unfortunate because there hasn't been any reaction. That's why we've emphasized and written to the Southern African Development Community because we think that static and African Union can be able to help us resolve these uh, surging issues of political violence as we head towards the elections because. There is deliberate uh, um, non-action on part of the police and, of course, non-action on part of the judiciary, which is clearly and visibly coming up as a captured judiciary, which cannot offer reprises um, to dejected and conflicted uh, parties. We have also uh, have been engaging the uh, Reconciliation Commission in this country to be able to try and resolve these issues of searching political violence because... We don't believe that we must have another disputed election and more so an election that is violent. So there is deliberate misaction and we believe that the Southern African Development Committee and the African Union can be able to help us so that we resolve this. As you know that if we don't resolve our domestic problem, they spill over to South Africa, which is inheriting part of our huge domestic governance problem, uh, which are moving out as a migration issue because more than 2 million Zimbabweans are crossing over as economic and political refugees to South Africa. So SADC must be able to help us so that we resolve these domestic governance issues that is perennially born out of disputed, vicious um, elections that have been happening successively so since the birth of our country in 1908. And we must bring an end to that. And we appeal to the Southern African community and the African Union so that they assist us resolve this issue because we have failed to find each other as political players. That's why you see uh, the opposition, the triple C, being treated as a banned political organization. Yes, and Gift. Is trying to destroy the authentic opposition. I mean, thank you so much, Gift, for explaining all of this to us. And uh, we're glad that uh, Nelson Chamisa came out unharmed. And we do hope that we can get to the bottom of this matter. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Have a good morning.